This is Dina Marie, host of Faith Moments with a Franciscan Moment on Mater Dei Radio. In 18... In 1989, Ecumenical Patriarch Demetrios I proclaimed a World Day of Prayer for Creation for the Orthodox Church. Since then, the World Council of Churches and in 2015, Pope Francis and the Catholic Church have joined together in recognizing a season of creation from September 1st, the Day of Prayer for Creation, through October 4th, the feast day of St. Francis of Assisi, the patron saint of ecology, and a beloved saint throughout the world. During the season of creation, people are invited to renew their relationship with our creator through celebration, conversion, and commitment together. One of the documents from Pope Francis that has received much attention since its release in 2015 is his encyclical Laudato Si on care for our common home. With me today is Franciscan friar Father Dan Petit to discuss the Holy Father's letter and to reflect its connection with St. Francis. Good morning, Father Dan. It's great to have you back with us today. Thank you, Dina Marie. It's good to be with you too and also to be together for this particular uh, anticipation of a second part to Laudato Si of the Holy Father. That's right. We've been hearing that on the feast day of St. Francis, October 4th, uh, Holy Father Pope Francis is expected to release a, a part two, so to speak, of this Laudato Si. So I thought we could talk a little bit about his first encyclical, a little bit about your take on that. But I, I want to start with going back to the election of Pope Francis, because we were all glued to the TV. We were watching to see, okay, who's going to be elected? And then what would his name be? And I was kind of surprised when I heard the word Francis come out. Now you as a Franciscan, tell us what, what you were thinking and what, you know, what, when you heard, is this Francis uh, de la Salle, uh, Francis uh, Xavier, Oh, wait, it's Francis of Assisi. Right, yeah, that, it was a surprise, to be honest, because I was at the time uh, teaching at Franciscan University in the study abroad program in Gaming, Austria, when Benedict resigned. And then, of course, they had the conclave. And here comes this newly elected pope onto the balcony, and I hear that he takes the name Frances Fran Francesco, um, Francisco. That's the Latin, Francisco. And I thought, Francisco, that's Francis. And the first thing I thought was, if he's a Jesuit, that must be Francis Xavier, you know, the great Jesuit missionary. And then he finished it, Francisco de Assis. And I go, what? You know, it's like, I, I was shocked. I really was uh, that a Jesuit would take St. Francis of Assisi's name for his title as the Pope. I, 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 I must admit that was, I mean, Franciscans, I've, I've always, in my own experience, gotten on well uh, with the Jesuits. I've studied with them. I was at Creighton before I joined the seminary. Uh, I studied with Jesuits. Some of them were my friends up in uh, Toronto, Canada, where I studied for the priesthood. So it's not that it, there's been animosity between Franciscans and Jesuits. It's just, um, so such a surprise that he would take Francis of Assisi over, say, Francis Xavier. Yeah, it was just really a shock, you know. Right, right. You know, and as you've we've seen the last, gosh, it's all it's been 10 years, right, since uh, Pope Francis was elected. Things that you've noticed in how has he reflected the saint name that he's taken in his um, papacy in just the way he's, he's been able to approach the communities. Um, how, do you see St. Francis in Pope Francis? I, I really do. I, I do. Now I know there's, there's probably been some cynicism online and the like about his papacy that, you know, based on some of the off the cuff remarks that sometimes maybe are ambiguous or whatever, but I really do see him mirroring St. Francis of Assisi in his care for the, the poor, yes, but also the, the weak and the ones um, who fall behind. That's what I really appreciate. You know, the whole notion, for example, of the Catholic Church as a field hospital for the wounded. I mean, that is so Francis of Assisi. Um, uh, you know, in, in a world where might makes right, 
It's a great life if you don't weaken. But what if you weaken? And see, that's what's happening today. A lot of people are weakening and they're not able to keep up. And we kind of treat them like the people that are just left behind. And see, Francis, I see him turning and looking back and saying, what about these people? We really have to care for them. And that's very, that's very Francis. Yeah. Father Dan Petit is with us today as we're reflecting on Pope Francis and St. Francis. We're coming close to the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi on October 4th. We're expecting a second encyclical, uh, the kind of a part two to La Datu Si. That's been, the Vatican has been talking about this for the last few weeks now. And so we'll, we'll wait and see. But in the meantime, I think it's great to explore just the the papacy of Pope Francis and to see how St. Francis is reflected. In fact, that title, Laudato Si, doesn't that come from a writing of St. Francis? Yes, it does. In fact, uh, Francis in Italian literature put himself on the map because he's the first one to write a piece of literature in native Italian because the language at the time was Latin. And so most of your artistic literature was done in the language of Latin. And now all of a sudden, Francis, there was all these dialects that were uh, local languages stemming from Latin. And one of them was the development of the language of Italian. And Francis, that's what he knew. He didn't know Latin that well. And so what he did was compose this poem in praise of God And he did it in the dialect of Italian, which was a first within the history of Italian literature. So he somewhat put himself on the map, you might say. And uh, Laudato Si is, praise be you, my Lord. And then it goes on to say, for brother sun, for sister moon. And he goes on to praise the Lord in his creatures, you know. And so it's a beautiful, uh, a beautiful moment. And if I may just uh, give some of the context of that uh, so people understand, uh, Francis, it, it's it's just remarkable that he was legally blind when he wrote that uh, poem. He was, uh, at the time it was winter, and they were hoping to get him to a doctor who, at the time, the the, the treatment for the eye disease he had, they thought, was to cauterize from the eye to the to the uh, temple with hot irons that they put in the fire and just steam it. And just that would be that would be what would fix the eye. That was the treatment. So he was going to go and get that. He eventually did. But they had a huge snowstorm in Assisi and he wasn't able to go. And so they went to San Damiano where St. Clair was and two brothers were with him and he They were in the basement because the ladies had the upstairs, you know. And so they were down in this dungeon basement. It's dark, dreary, moist. And that night, Francis suffered what was known as the plague Mm -hmm. of rats. He had all these rats crawling all over his body for the whole night. And he began to experience Mm self-pity. Until until the morning, he... He reproached himself for his self-pity, was legally blind, and in response, composed this beautiful poem, Praise Be to You, My Lord, to get, you know, it's almost like when I say thank you, I'm off myself and on to you. And that's what he did. He he recognized and reproached himself for his self-pity, turning in on himself. And he turned it out into this beautiful hymn that began Laudato Si in Italian. Praise be you, my Lord, for brother sun, for sister air, for sister moon, and all this. It's beautiful, and it just goes through. And um, and that's the context that he wrote it in. He didn't even, wasn't able to even see, except to do it by memory, uh, oh my what he wrote. Yeah. The Canticle of Creatures by St. Francis. And, you know, when you start to hear the background of how that was written and why that was written, and you think in his darkest and literally darkest moment, what does he turn to? 
praising the Lord. I'm going to praise the Lord. I'm not going to blame. I'm not going to, he started to go into self-pity, like you said, but he went, no, 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 no. I'm here to praise the Lord, give glory to the Lord. And Pope Francis picks up on that title. And that is the beginning of a Laudato Si. So interesting to see that history. Um, and, and I believe the spirit of St. Francis working today in uh, in the church. So how great is that? Father Dan Petit is with us. Father Dan, we are coming up to a break and I want to take a quick break. We'll come back and really open up a little bit of this encyclical, get a little bit of the sense of where we see St. Francis in the encyclical, how we can use it in our lives today. Uh, would you stay with me and we'll be back in the next half hour? Sure, I'll be glad to.